Well, good morning. Welcome to this devotion. I'm George Fuller, the pastor at Window Christian Church. And we gather here on Zoom and Facebook Live each Wednesday at 730. And we're just meeting to have a short devotion for encouragement. Um, and then after the devotion that, um, that everybody sees, we stop sending it live to Facebook and those of us on Zoom will talk a little bit and you're welcome to join us there so you can talk and also um, um, you can interact with us on Facebook as well. And we're glad that you're here. I'm walking through Psalm 8 one little piece at a time. We recently finished Psalm 23. I'm going to read Psalm 8 um, out of the New Jerusalem Bible. And I choose that because it preserves the different names of God and doesn't just use the word God to refer to all the different ways in which God was known and experienced by the people of Israel. And Yahweh, the name that's used in this psalm, is the one who is who we live and move and have our being in. Yahweh is beyond everything and in everything and our source, our sustainer, our end, our alpha and omega. It's the it's that word that the great the Ten Commandments say you can't like put a word on it, make an image of it, so that so you reduce it down um, and make an idol out of the true God. The true God is Yahweh. So let's listen to Psalm eight. Yahweh, our Lord, how great is your name throughout the earth. Above the heavens is your majesty chanted by the mouths of children, babes in arms. You set your stronghold firm against your foes to subdue enemies and rebels. I look up at your heavens, made by your fingers, at the moon and stars you set in place. Ah, what is man that thou should spare a thought for him, the son of man that you should care for him? Yet you have made him little less than a god. You have crowned him with glory and splendor made him Lord over the work of your hands, set all things under his feet, sheep and oxen, all these, yes, wild animals too, birds in the air, fish in the sea, traveling the paths of the ocean, Yahweh, our Lord, how great is your name throughout the earth. Today I was wanting to just focus on the phrase, Above the heavens, your glory is above the heavens. Your majesty is chanted above the heavens by the mouths of children and babes in arms. I found it interesting to learn that the heavens in ancient times, they didn't understand that the earth was a sphere. They didn't understand there was a solar system and galaxies and the swirling and expanding and contracting universe like we've been able to discover as we look through telescopes and and uh, do the calculations of the objects moving so if you come back to their view there are the heavens for them there were three levels of heaven there's the heaven where the birds fly and we live there's the heavens up in the sky uh, beyond where we can control where rain comes from and the, the sun and the moon move. And then there's a third heaven beyond that where they believe God dwelled. And so when they say heavens in plural, what they're saying is that God dwells within everything. So even though they had a flat earth and even though they hadn't looked through telescopes yet or figured out the things we're starting to figure out, they affirm that Yahweh, the one true God, the one God who is in and moving among everything, God's known, God's majesty is demonstrated in all the heavens. And so it includes the mouths of children. It includes babes in arms. And I believe that one way that we can be encouraged is that God's majesty is not only everywhere in our world, but in us. From the time we were babes, God was wanting to be in and in relationship to us so that we could know God and give God our love in return for the love of God coming to us to 
sustain our lives with all that God gives us that sustains our lives. We can love with the love with which we've been loved. We can be part of that glory and that majesty that is chanted uh, above the heavens. I don't know if you've reached your limit recently. I suspect it's a pretty human experience of getting past the limit of our understanding, getting past the limit of what we can see, getting past the limit of what we can actually feel like we are part of, that we matter. In Psalm 8, we're going to keep walking through it, but in Psalm 8, the psalmist is realizing not only is God moving in all the heavens, not only is God moving in my life from the time I'm a babe and in the babes that we hold and in every stage of life, but this God is actually with us, calling us, moving us, and we can be, and we were made to be, the glory of God. The ones who not only show God to the world, but the ones who accomplish for God what God wants accomplished in the earth. And we'll talk more about that as we move forward. This morning, I just want you to know that if you, and I say to myself, if you, George, get beyond your understanding. God is in all the heavens, beyond anything you can see and understand. And from the time you were a babe, before you could think straight or talk or anything, you were the place where God's love and majesty dwelled. And you are invited to grow up, to come to know the God whose majesty is in all the heavens and the God who is living in you, in me, and bringing about the manifestation of the causing of the showing up of the, the presence, the love, and the life of God in the world. May it be so in us and among us.